So let's look at this example. Find all values of x star that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem for integrals. So I want to find what is this value x star right here. So what is that value between a and b? Well, according to the mean value theorem for integrals, we have this part right here. So I'm going to write that down. The integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to f at x star times b minus a. All right, let's fill in. So that's the integral. What's a and what's b? a is 0, b is 3. I'm going to put 0, 3. What is f of x? f of x is the square root of x. dx It's equal to, what is f of x star? It's just my function f here evaluated at x star. So it would be the square root of x star, square root of x star, times b minus a. So that's 3 minus 0. Well, isn't this the same thing as the integral from 0 to 3 of x to the 1 half dx is equal to the square root of x star times 3? Well, let's take an antiderivative. That's x to the what? 1 half plus 2 halves is what? 3 halves? Over 3 halves, or I could say times the reciprocal of that, 2 thirds, and I want to evaluate it from 0 to 3. It's equal to, now this I could write as 3 times the square root of x star. So this is 2 thirds times 3 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves is equal to 3 times the square root of x star. Now keep in mind, what am I finding again? I'm finding x star, so somehow I'm going to need to solve for x star here. Well, this is 2 thirds, this is 2 thirds times 3 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves is just 3 to the 3 halves is equal to 3 times the square root of x star. Now to get this part by itself, let's divide both sides by 3. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll do that in just a second. Let's deal with this first. This is over 1, 3 to the 3 halves. So basically I have this. 2 thirds times 3 to the 3 halves over 1 is equal to 3 square roots of x star. All right, isn't there an understood 1 on that exponent right there? So then I have 2 over 3 to some exponent. And what happens with these exponents? Okay, let's suppose I had this. x cubed, say times x squared right here, and then I had just any old numbers here, okay? What would happen? I would say, okay, both of these x's divide out with two of them there, and I'm left with x to the first at the bottom, right? So basically it was subtraction. It was 3 minus that 2, okay? Similar thing right here. You can divide all these 3's out, 3 to the first, and subtract 1 from this one. So if I subtract 1 from an exponent of 3 halves, what's 3 halves? 1.5? What's 1 minus 1? What's 1.5 1 minus 1? 1? 0.5 or 1 half. So really what I'm left with is 2 over 1 times 3 to the 1 half over 1 is equal to 3 times the square root of x star. Well, that's 2 times 3 to the 1 half is equal to 3 square roots of x star. And what happens if I divide both sides by 3? Let's see what I'm left with. All right, 3 to the 1 half, all those divide out, you left it 1. That's an understood 1 there is my exponent. So what am I going to have if I subtract out 1 half? I'm going to have 3 to the 1 half at the bottom. is equal to square root of x star. 
Now what do we do to get rid of that square root? Well, we square each side. If we square each side, we get... I have to go to a new page here. So what was I left with on the last example? 2 over 3 to the 1 half is equal to the square root of x star. Now square both sides, so you have 2 over 3 to the 1 half squared is equal to x star. Well, what's 2 squared? It's 4. What's 3 to the 1 half squared? That's 3 to the 1 half times 2, or 3 to the first, is equal to x star. So what is that value of x star? 4 thirds. Does it fall in my original interval, my original problem? Look at your original problem. 0 to 3. 4 thirds does fit in that interval.